Hi, this is Mitch Postal. I'm president of the San Mateo County Historical Association, and I'm also a resident of San Bruno. It's my pleasure um, to run you through a little bit to some of the um, more outstanding uh, historic places in San Bruno, especially uh, within its downtown. Uh, I like to start with this um, historic picture we have from 1915 that shows uh, San Bruno, and in the background you can see the lakes. And look at those hills, how uh, rural everything still was. That one um, squiggly line that kind of runs through the middle of the photograph, that's Crystal Springs. And um, off to the right, that other straighter line that runs into the hills, that's Genevin. And then you can see, if you, if you look toward the bottom of the other picture, especially off to the right, is where the future downtown of San Bruno is going to be. Next uh, historic shot uh, shows the uh, Genovan House at the intersection of El Camino and San Mateo Avenue. And you can see that uh, the house sat right there, uh, kind of in the middle of this V, in a V kind of shape between the two. The property was in a V shape between the two roads, with El Camino being off to the left and San Mateo Avenue being off to the right. Uh, and this was a uh, fairly uh, famous roadhouse owned by August Genovin, who became uh, quite a um, founding uh, father of San Bruno. And it, uh, it is in the same uh, positioning uh, as a later filling station. And you can see here's the filling station uh, today as it exists. Uh, the gas station then um, is evident in this photograph from the 1930s, uh, right there at the intersection of El Camino and San Mateo Avenue. And here's another historic photograph, this one from 1964, that also shows um, the positioning of, the, uh, of that gas station. Now across the street, if we, look, uh, if we look in the other direction, we turn and look to the south on the west side of the street, as you, as you can see where the Walgreens is today. That was the uh, site of Uncle Tom's Cabin. And that was uh, originally a stage stop, uh, and later on a road stop uh, for early automobile um, patronage. And it, um, uh, it, was quite a, uh, it was quite a landmark um, uh, for the San Bruno area. Uh, and was, um, it, it was started by a man named Thomas Rolls, who uh, uh, was an African American, a former slave. And uh, he, um, he gave it its name, uh, Uncle Tom's Cabin, and was a famous proprietor there for uh, many years. Here um, to, uh, uh, to our left, as we, uh, we were looking north, as we turn and we're facing, uh, no, uh, we're facing now uh, uh, east, um, you can see that this was the site of the El Camino Theater which until just recently stood at this lot. Now it's going to be apartments and condominiums. But the El Camino uh, was an institution for uh, many kids growing up in the 40s, 50s, and 60s uh, going to see um, afternoon uh, movies there. As we walk down the street, we get to the uh, 400 block uh, of San Mateo Avenue. And um, here we're going to stop in front of what was, um, in the old days, um, and really up until recently, the club barbershop. Uh, and here, again, many kids would have gotten their, uh, their cuts. Uh, and it's probably the best commercial example of Art, art Morden style of architecture uh, in, uh, in San Bruno. It was built in 1940. And it has been um, a, a given awards recently by the Art Deco Society of California. As we walk down um, San Mateo Avenue, uh, here we are at uh, 495 in front of the old Barney Ward building. And uh, this, this uh, building was uh, constructed actually before the, before the earthquake. And there wasn't much in San Bruno before the earthquake. Um, with, with the earthquake, um, there was um, quite a few people that um, moved from San Francisco down the peninsula 
in one of the suburbs that um, got a good start from this was uh, was San Bruno, and uh, this was a, a business um, establishment until about 1906, and then very rapidly thereafter, um, Barney Ward converted it into sort of a saloon. Then in the 1930s, it came to be owned by a man named Newell. And so that's what you see here. It's the Newell's, uh, Newell's Bar. And he uh, added um, that um, second story to it. And it has functioned as a bar uh, since, the 19, since the 1930s. Moving down the street, we come to uh, 588 uh, San Mateo Avenue. Uh, and here we have a 1925 uh, building that was the original San Bruno uh, Lumber Company office. And uh, it was constructed in 1925. Uh, and um, it's a curious mixture of mission revival and art more than um, architectural styles. Walk further down San Mateo Avenue, and here we come to 598. And this might be the most historic building in all of San Bruno, even though it doesn't look very historic, really. But this was the original headquarters for IMAC, uh, Itel McCullough Corporation. Th this building um, housed all of the functions of operations when um, Itel McCullough got started in 1932. But as World War II began, um, the business expanded uh, quite a lot. Um, here there was made um, radio vacuum tubes and also vacuum tubes for radars. Uh, the two founders, William Itell and Jack McCullough, uh, left San Francisco to start their own business uh, down the peninsula. And um, they began with one employee. Uh, at this office, but by 1937, when radio had turned from a novelty into a necessity uh, in America, business was booming. They had 12 employees. And then as World War II came closer and closer, in 1940, Western Electric contracted IMAC for production of 10,000 tubes for use in communication equipment and newly developed uh, radar systems. I tell, um, McCullough was um, quite uh, famous uh, for um, their um, innovative ways to handle their workforce. Of course, with men um, away in the service, uh, they um, experimented and were quite successful in hiring women uh, in the manufacturing uh, phase of their business and um, became noted for their nursery schools and preschools and um, uh, after school activities for the children uh, became a real model uh, for many of the uh, wartime uh, companies that were, that were so busy helping uh, us to win World War II. Now as we go down uh, San Mateo um, Avenue, we come to uh, the 601 address. Uh, and uh, this uh, um, building goes back to the goes back to 1930 and is a great example of Mediterranean um, architectural style. As a matter of fact, this building was thought to be uh, so iconic of that style that um, it was used in the motion picture Tucker, if you, may, if you remember that one, a Hollywood production, uh, and is currently um, um, the San Bruno Vacuum and Sewing uh, Center. As we go down the street, just right next door, as a matter of fact, um, we find at um, 609 uh, San Mateo Avenue uh, the Benedeni building. And uh, this one was built by some, uh, some co Kosai family. And um, it um, was uh, constructed in 1909, so it was very early. Anything that's uh, right after the earthquake is one of the initial buildings in the downtown area of San Bruno. And uh, this one housed originally the San Bruno Drug Company, and then later on the, uh, the post office, as a matter of fact. Now, if we move down San Mateo Avenue and we look up to the other side of the street, uh, we can see at 678 the original building for Artichoke Joe's. And Artichoke Joe's today is one of the major businesses in San, in San Bruno. Uh, this was um, 
actually one of the original business uh, buildings uh, in the downtown. Uh, it was um, at first a plumbing shop, um, and then um, later on um, it was bought by a man named Joe Salmon. As a matter of fact, in 1921, a native of Malta uh, who had been running a successful card room in San Francisco and uh, decided to have a business down the peninsula, and he called it Joe's Pool Hall. And this um, business evolved into one of the most successful of all the card rooms in the, in the Bay Area. Uh, later on, um, uh, it, it got the name Artichoke Joe's. Uh, today, the business is still owned by the Samet family. So at the very site of the Legion Post stood the San Bruno House which was a uh, stagecoach stop and later became important during railroad days. It was built by uh, a man named Richard Cunningham, a uh, native of Ireland. And here we can take a, we can sort of pause and think about uh, transportation and um, how it affected uh, San Mateo County, actually. Uh, but here you can see evidence of all uh, transportation um, methods. As a matter of fact, we take a look at this historic picture which shows the San Bruno train station um, in the foreground. Just behind it is where the SP, the Southern Pacific tracks would have been. And just in front of it, as you see running down the middle of the photograph, is where the 40 line or the streetcar ran. And then of course in later days we're going to have the, uh, we're going to have the automobile. So this was a, a place where we can really visualize a lot about San Bruno um, transportation history. If we look at the Legion um, Post, the American Legion Post. Um, it was built in 1935. Uh, this was um, an important part of San Bruno history, especially during World War II, when the post was used uh, successfully uh, to help entertain troops. And remember, a little while ago, we talked about the IMAC um, uh, company. A lot of the workers there, the women workers, um, spent a lot of time uh, at this uh, place to help uh, uh, entertain the servicemen um, during uh, World War II. Its, uh, its design is Art Morden, and it was constructed in 1935. Now, as we approach San Bruno Avenue, um, we're now looking at um, the original San Bruno Funeral Home, built in 1935, now um, uh, House of Worship, uh, but it was built in the Spanish eclectic style, uh, and is one of the uh, best examples in the area that we could find of this particular uh, style of architecture. Uh, unlike the previous Mission Revival style, the Spanish eclectic style relayed, uh, relied more on accurate historical precedents uh, for its decorative uh, vocabulary from Spanish, Mexican, and Mediterranean sources. Here we are at the Welch family slot machine collection here in San Bruno, right in the middle of the city, and can you believe that one of the most significant collections of gambling paraphernalia anywhere is right here in San Bruno? This is my father, Joe Welch Sr. I'm Joe Welch Jr. And my father created this uh, collection of slot machines and uh, became his hobby as <coughs> later in life. So in 1890, these were, became the, uh, the gambling devices of that era. And um, so in you know, old cowboy movies and stuff, you might notice that these are in the background. So these are, uh, they call them upright machines, basically like a roulette wheel, wheel that's inverted. You bet on a color. And the odds paid accordingly how many slots there were for that particular color. So this would be considered a double. It's a rare machine, but it has two inverted roulette wheels in one cabinet. Some of them play music. This one plays music. So this would be considered a rarer machine. But as time went on, they evolved into a smaller device and they became known as a three-reel machine, which is what you go to Las Vegas today. Basically, that's what you're playing. So as time went on, these became the slot machines of the future. It actually has three reels. I'm sure most people like, have dropped a coin into one know how it works and you try to get the two cherries or the three cherries or three things to line up. Um, but this is what these big machines evolved into which could be carried by one person. So this 
that stuff is pre is like 1890 to 1910, and then it became the smaller three reel machines, um, which happened to be invented in San Francisco by a fellow named Charles Fay. Okay, so this was the very first three reel slot machine it was invented by a fellow in San Francisco named Charles Fay around 1905. So this went on to replace the big wooden cabinet machines. This is a very rare machine, so it has three reels in one cabinet. It's very heavy, but there's, there's not very many of them, so it's kind of a rare piece. And finally, um, we're going to come across the Nick Drescher Hall. Uh, at uh, 300 West Angus Avenue. And um, this one is, um, is kind of interesting because at this, at this time, around the turn of the century, these kinds of halls were so important uh, for communities. Drescher himself was uh, the youngest um, brother of, um, uh, of the Drescher, uh, within the Drescher family. Um, they were all San Bruno builders. In 1910, Nick and a number of uh, local carpenters purchased this lot uh, and constructed a small wood frame meeting hall for the carpenters. Uh, Drescher helped finance the enterprise uh, with the provision that uh, his loan would be repaid within a set a period of time, but for some reason uh, the loan was not fully repaid. And in 1924, Drescher took possession of the hall and added living quarters for his family to the north end of the building. Uh, today it, it is a house of worship. Thank you very much for um, visiting San Bruno's historic sites with me. Uh, this is Mitch Postal, president of the San Mateo County Historical Association, signing off. And uh, we hope that uh, you might take your own trip down uh, downtown San, San Bruno sometime and see it for yourself.